as we enter week five of the college football season, I want to take a few minutes and, and just kind of recap the quarterback play in the SEC so far and talk about the top guys in the SEC just real quick and then kind of preview the games for this weekend and talk about the top quarterback games, the top, top quarterback matchups, and the SEC. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And let's talk about quarterback Bryce Young. First, uh, I think we've got about five or six guys that are kind of in that top tier right now uh, as far as quarterback plays in the SEC. I think Bryce Young is either one or number two right now with Matt Corral. And, and through the first four games of the season, he's got 15 touchdowns, only one interception. And two of those matchups are pretty uh, pretty good matchups, right? Miami and Florida. And I know Miami has fallen off a bit as of late, but still a good matchup. Uh, and he still put up big numbers there. And so with Miami and the, the Miami and Florida game combined, Bryce Young has seven touchdowns to zero interceptions. So when the big games have come up, he's really shown up. And then against Mercer and Southern Miss as well, they put up big numbers. So Bryce Young playing lights out, doing a good job with the offense, uh, keeping his eyes downfield, maneuvering in the pocket, always looking to throw. Uh, I, I, I've heard some Bama fans and people talk about they want to see him run a bit more. Uh, I think that that capability is there and it'll be shown whenever needed. But again, so far, Bryce Young playing lights out. Matt Corral, nine touchdowns so far, zero interceptions. Uh, their, their competition hasn't been n nearly as as big as Miami's. I think their best game is against Louisville, or their top team was against Louisville. They played Tulane and FCS, I think. Uh, Corral's also had five touchdowns on the ground as well. So again, zero interceptions, 14 total touchdowns, uh, if you include the rushing and passing together. Again, playing lights out uh, and we will preview the, the Ole Miss Bama game here in a little bit. Again, Matt Corral in that top two. I think when you get to number three, four, five, I think now it gets kind of uh, murky, if you will. I think as far as talent goes and projectability before the season started, JT Downs is, of course, up there in the top three. So let's just go ahead and talk about Downs real quick. Uh, he's only played in three games. He didn't play in the game against UAB. Again, they played against Clemson, one of the best defenses in the country, so uh, I'm not going to hold that performance against him. Uh, whenever they played against South Carolina and Bandy, he's been lights out, right? Let's look at his stats real quick. Uh, he's got five total touchdowns, two interceptions, uh, eight yards per attempt, and he leads the SEC in, pass in completion percentage, uh, 76, which is an, an, an impressive and, and a good stat that you want for a Georgia quarterback. So again, he's up there in that top three, four uh, range right now. Something else I want to talk about that we've talked about on the channel before is Max Johnson. And I, and I think he's kind of somewhat flying under the radar just because LSU, I guess you can say, has struggled so far, at least has lost to UCLA, uh, struggled a bit with McNeese, and then uh, had a good game this past week, but Mississippi State almost came back. But let's look at Johnson's numbers real quick. He's got 15 touchdowns mm -hmm. to three interceptions. Uh, in, in six games, he's had three touchdowns in each of those games uh, as, as a starter. So I think he's kind of playing under the radar. LSU asked him to do a lot of stuff because uh, the running game is not getting going. So there's not a lot of offensive uh, stuff really going on besides whenever he hits a big play. So I think he's playing under the radar, playing better than most people think. Uh, there's some kind of fix-ups you want him to, to work on and improvements you want him to, to work on, especially putting some more juice in the ball. Don't fall off your back foot. Get the ball out there to your receivers. But overall, I think he's playing pretty good. I think he deserves to be up in that 3-4-5 uh, talk as far as quarterbacks and SEC goes. Someone else, K.J. Jefferson. Again, we're going to talk about him and when we preview the Arkansas-Georgia game. Uh, but he's played pretty good this season, especially battling through injuries. Right? He's just a football player. He just gets the job done. He leaves the SEC in yards per attempt. He's got six touchdowns in the air, two on the ground, only throwing two interceptions so far. And as far as rushing goes, probably the best running quarterback in the SEC besides maybe Emory Jones and, and Anthony Richardson is probably the number one guy. But as far as starters go, uh, it's probably Jefferson and Emory Jones, right? Uh, and Jefferson has about 230 yards, if I remember correctly, rushing so far. And it would be more if he didn't get injured against AM one And then Georgia Southern, he didn't need to rush all that much. But the the, the wins against Texas and Texas A&M, impressive performance there. A few other guys I want to talk about just, just, just real quick before we get into it. Actually, just one more guy uh, is Will Rogers. Kind of a tough one because statistically he leads the, the SEC in passing yards, but the offense you expect him, the offense he's in, you expect that to happen. Uh, he's got 11 touchdowns, two interceptions. So doing a good job taking care of the football. Very accurate, the second uh, accurate, second most accurate quarterback in the SEC. Excuse me. Yards per attempt is only in the sixes, which isn't uncommon for a, a Mike Leach offense, but you probably want to see that a bit more, right? I think he's had more than 70 per attempts. More than 70 passing attempts, more than the next guy closest to him. And yards per attempt are only uh, at 6 point something, I believe, 6.8 or something. So I think if, if they could find a way to kind of get those yards per attempt up, then I think Rodgers could potentially work his way up. But I think as far as like the three, four, five guys go, I think, we, I think it's Bryce Young, Matt Corral, JT Daniels is still up there because of his potential. I think we'll find out a lot about JT Daniels this week against Arkansas. Max Johnson's playing good, and then uh, K.J. Jefferson as well. You can probably make an argument for Connor Bazelak too, and, and Emory Jones as of late has played well, so if he has a few more games like that, then he could be up there too. We'll revisit the list next week. Let's go ahead and dive into the game preview. So Arkansas-Georgia, probably my most excited game of the of, of the weekend, if I'm being honest. Um, the Georgia defense, I'm not going to say anything you already know. 
arguably the best defense in college football. Let me just read out these stats real quick so Arkansas fans and KJ Jefferson fans know what they're going up against, right? I know they already have a good idea. Let's just look at these stats real quick. So we have the SEC most every uh, defensive passing uh, statistic. They've only given up one passing touchdown this year, so they're tied for number one as you see there. Uh, they have seven interceptions this year, so they do a good job creating havoc. And th watching the defense, they, they do stuff to try to confuse the quarterback, right? They, they don't always bring a ton of pressure, but when they decide to bring pressure, it's it's on big downs usually, and they usually are trying to force a quarterback to, uh, to make a bad decision, right? So they have seven interceptions. They're giving up 115 yards in the air. That's number one in the SEC. And then they've, give, they've gotten 14 sacks, which is number two in the SEC, which is pretty impressive for the simple fact they don't always bring pressure but their guys are so good up front that they're able to win their matchups and then with their with their dbs they they will challenge their the, the quarterback and the receivers to beat them if you beat them deep great that's all that's that's a good play it's on you but you got to work for it right and so uh georgia best deep one of the best defenses probably the best defense in the sec as of right now going up against kj jefferson and so I think with K.J. Jefferson, the Arkansas offense, what they need to really do against this defense is I'm not trying to take deep shots uh, uh, at the beginning of the game uh, like you did against AM. That was one that was warranted. That's what we wanted against AM. But against Georgia, I want to be in the game in the fourth quarter. I want to take what the defense gives me. And then when the fourth quarter comes around, I want to be in striking distance, and that's when I want to take my deep shots, right? So I'm going to take what the defense gives me. I'm not going to be baited and taking deep shots when I don't need to. And I think if I can, if Jefferson is depending on his health, if he's able to get outside the pocket, use his uh, running ability a bit, and depending on you know how his 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 legs are doing from a and game when he got injured that could really force georgia to do some defensive things they don't want to do so that's what i'm looking for if i'm arkansas if i'm jt daniels arkansas defense is pretty damn good too uh, they're only giving up 144 yards per game that's number three in the sec they've only given up one passing touchdown tied with georgia and they've got 10 sacks uh, so they don't get a ton of pressure but what arkansas likes to do is they like to drop eight guys seven guys they usually only bring three maybe four if they're doing a stun or a blitz sometimes five but they like to drop drop guys back and and have the quarterback kind of get bored right so i'm getting bored taking these underneath throws and then that's when they try to push the ball downfield uh, and, and try to make a mistake so um, jt downs is kind of similar to what i just said about kj jefferson uh, you don't want to force a shot that's not there i would just take what the defense gives me move the ball in between the 20s and get creative when you get inside the red zone so arkansas georgia super excited for that game another big quarterback matchup of course Ole miss and alabama i think alabama's defense has been much better uh this year so far and i think I think we've seen that so far. Now they're big tests, and now we're going against uh, Ole Miss and Matt Corral. The Alabama defense, six interceptions so far. Uh, this is number – so they're tied for number two. Or actually, they're just they're number two in the SEC as far as interceptions go. And they're giving up five touchdowns passing. They have 100 – they're giving up 160 yards through the air as well. So I think there might be some more running, uh, running plays in this game. Uh, Ole Miss actually, I think, did a pretty good job last year on the, on the ground against Alabama. So – uh, I know it's going to be a high-scoring game. I don't know if it's going to get what the total kind of is projected right now. It's, it's a high total, pushing like 80, I believe. Uh, but regardless, I think we'll see a high-scoring game. There will be some better defense than last year. I think Ole Miss's defense is towards the bottom again, so I think Bryce Young will be able to kind of do what he wants passing-wise, right? So uh, you expect big games from both Matt Corral and Bryce Young. As far as quarter, quarterback matchups go, this is probably the number one quarterback matchup uh, this weekend. LSU Auburn, I think, is an interesting one as well. Uh, with Max Johnson, we've already talked about him. But I think with Auburn's quarterback situation right now, I, as of now, I haven't heard if it's Bo Nix or TJ Finley. We put out a, a video over both of them uh, and kind of what they need to do and who will start this week. Uh, LSU's defense towards the bottom statistically in a lot of uh, a lot of passing categories. They're what they do do well though is they get pressure on the quarterback. They have 18 sacks. It leads the it leads the uh, it's number one the SEC. But there is opportunity um, there for the opposing quarterback if they're able to take it. So regardless if it's Bo Nix, TJ Finley, you got to take what's presented if you are facing LSU. And know that there will be opportunities, but um, you know you got to complete the pass, right? That, that's something that uh, if I'm the Auburn fan or if I'm the Auburn quarterback, getting some high completion type throws, high percentage type throws early and, and often, I think is going to uh, be the recipe for Auburn in that game, whoever the quarterback is. Let's talk about a few more real quick. Uh, Florida, Kentucky. Florida's defense is kind of at the bottom statistically, uh, defensively, as far as it relates to uh, the passing game. But I think they're actually better. Uh, they went on a 31-0 run uh, against um, Tennessee last week, and the defense played pretty well. So even though statistically it's not kind of at the top tier, I do think that they are playing a lot better. And Kentucky with Will Levis, I think Levis has, has had some pretty good games. Um 
there's been a few where the defense has, at least last week, I believe, where the, where the defense kind of took away some of the deep shots. So I think if I'm Florida, I'm taking the deep shots again, and I'm trying to force Will Levis to beat me through the arm. If I'm Kentucky and Will Levis, I'm trying to get my ball. I'm trying to get the ball to my two stud quick receivers. I think Josh Ali and Wandale Robinson get them involved. And, of course, they want to get the running game involved. But Will Levis can hurt you with his legs as well, just like Emory Jones can hurt Kentucky's defense, who's in the upper half in yards per game, given up uh, passing yards. Uh, but I think we'll see Florida uh, with the run game go after Kentucky and then try to uh, hit some pop passes after that. Let's go over a few more games just real quick. We'll touch on Tennessee, Mizzou. Tennessee is always interesting because who's going to play quarterback? Is it Joe Milton? He has a bomb, but who has a cannon for an arm, but can't, uh, you know, is not that accurate. There's going to be Hendon Hooker, who I think got injured some last game, but he's done a good job taking care of the football and poses a little bit more of a running threat. We're going to see who starts there. Uh, Missouri, Connell Basel like, hasn't played pretty bad hasn't played bad I don't think uh, I think he's got 11 or 10 touchdowns or three picks so you could have probably talk about him the upper half of quarterback so far in the SEC um, but I think this game is going to be uh, what defense can give up the less amount of yards right I, I don't know how much uh, is going to rely on the quarterbacks this game I think it's going to be what defenses can get some stops and what quarterbacks can just not turn the ball over Mississippi State Texas A&M uh, Mississippi State going up against a really good defense in Texas A&M, number two uh, as far as passing yards per game in the SEC. Um, and as far as Mississippi State's defense goes, uh, they're tied for last, I believe, in a lot of passing categories. They've given up the most most passing yards per game in the SEC. They've given up nine touchdowns, which is tied for last in the SEC. They have five takeaways. So um, kind of goes hand-in-hand hand because A&M has, has their backup quarterback in who has struggled so far. Uh, so this may be a, a good kind of get-right game, if you will, uh, if he can find some passes, create some good schemes for him, or Zach Calzada, mm -hmm. and then for the Texas A&M defense, going up against Will Rogers, who throws the ball a lot, uh, of course, with Mike, with my, uh, not Mike, not Mark, Mike, Mike Leach. I apologize. Um, that defense has played really well so far, and I expect them to continue to play. Uh, up to that level that they've played so far. But I wonder from you guys, what do you think about the quarterback matchups? Who do you think are the top two, three, four quarterbacks in the SEC right now? Does anything differ from, from what I said in the beginning of the video? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time whenever we do this, this kind of SEC preview, SEC recap of quarterback play. So we'll see you next week. Again, let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. We'll see you next time.